I'd like to welcome you into my studio for a few minutes. And while we're at it, I'll introduce you to my friend Sienna. She keeps an eye on everything. I like to also purchase some off tints uh, paints that I can use to uh, tint the uh, surfaces of my canvas. Those paints are often rejects at the paint store and they work just fine. And here are my canvases. I like to do a few of them at once. Why not? So they're good and ready when I'm ready to paint. Anytime I'm ready to paint. And in this case, we're going to do a few little 8x10s. Or for this demonstration, we'll do one 8x10. But I'll tint three of them. The color I'm using is a warmer charcoal tone. But you can use any kind you like. There really is no uh, matter to what color you choose. There are a lot of artists that like to use uh, pink or orange or gray. Sometimes artists like to use black. And other artists, like myself, most of the time, I will just use a gessoed uh, white surface and just go ahead and paint on it. But today I'm going to do a technique called wet on wet. Now, if you're a watercolor artist like I was for the first 35 years of my life and still occasionally love to paint those watercolors, well, you know that wet on wet is just painting uh, wet details into an already still wet painting and it just makes for the softest, foggiest, uh, most um, uh, evocative types of images, I like to say. And in the case of today's sample, we're going to do that. But you've got to make sure that you've always got on hand your favorite beverage and a couple of little treats. Why not? It's tea for me today in one of my favorite mugs. <laughs> I like to uh, soak my brush for wet and wet in a uh, bit of linseed oil. Soak it good. Let it sit for a minute. And then after it's fully saturated... I'll just uh, brush out the majority of the oil and leave the brush with that uh, oily, uh, I guess you could say, just a saturation of the brush. And that means when I start to mix my paint on my palette, it's uh, quite pliable. It's quite uh, liquid. And this, for me, is just like a... a a visit back in time to my watercolor days when I used to love painting misty watercolor backgrounds. And then on top of that, I would uh, start to bring the strength of the color up and uh, create a, a beautiful sense of depth. But to begin this one, I'm going with a very light uh, gray and I'm mixing that with uh, basically a uh, Van Dyke Brown and a little bit of Prussian Blue and uh, a tad of uh, Titanium White just to uh, keep it from being too dark and too strong. That's the background. And then I'll just add a little bit of the same colors, uh, a little stronger with a little less linseed in them. And we'll create a more uh, powerful presence of those colors in the foreground uh, layer. Now you can see... I've just gone straight into the titanium white with the same colors on my brush. It's the same brush that I used right from the very beginning. And here it is going into the water now and just using that same big fat brush to really have fun now with the movement of the water, with the waves. You know, I heard it said uh, once, in fact, I've heard it said a few times when people see the size of my brushes. Oh, he's probably not going to be doing an 8x10 with that one today. But the reality is, as you can see, the big brush provides those broad strokes. And if you don't mix your brush into the paint too thoroughly, you can get a nice blend of the existing colors that will all come out on the canvas in various uh, degrees and values and uh, and then you have this better sense of foreground, middle ground, and far ground. And I like to put that in plain English. I just like to say here, there, 
and way over there and I just like to take my time with this brush you see I'll just go in there with uh, a couple of little dabs of color and I'll start to blend it but not too much I really like my individual brush strokes to to live as they say or as I like to say I like them to breathe and to have their own sense rather than blending out the background and having it all perfectly smooth I just like the happenstance or the uh, looseness of those broad strokes it's kind of the way the air is especially along the lakefront you might have the wind blowing and in this case you certainly do the water is reacting to that and uh, the air has mist in it it has yeah it has vapor in it and well it's moving and so we need to show some of those movements just by allowing the brush to just dab and leave its path behind it's just a wonderful experience i feel like i can hear the wind blowing as i'm applying these strokes can you feel it while you're watching well we're getting uh done with the broad strokes now i'll get my small brush out and with it i'll go straight into the van dyke brown and the prussian blue and i'll just get a nice intense uh un un uh, uh hmm just uh, not uh, full of linseed oil just a straight unadulterated paint just just applying it almost dry brush right over top of the surface now remember this painting is uh, still quite wet and uh, the big brush still had uh, linseed oil in it so this is very much a, a, a wet on wet but this intensity of this small brush loaded with you know un uh, un uh, liquefied unmixed uh, paint in other words no linseed oil just go straight onto the canvas well that will give us some stronger uh, strokes against those softer background ones and you see that you get those nice little tree details as the breezes uh, blow as the winds whip up the waves and the air moves we can almost feel it we can almost feel it blowing against our skin our face <laughs> it's just a wonderful thing and for me that's when a painting starts to starts to really live when it has breath of its own and it carries us and it transports us to a place that uh, we are not right now where we might wish we could be or where we would just like to daydream of i really hope you've enjoyed this session of wet on wet with robert mcafee and uh, come back again, will you? We'll do this again one day.